Hey, this is Paul, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the argument from divine hiddenness. Now, this is an argument against God based in the idea that God would want to have a relationship with people, but doesn't make his existence as clear. So the argument goes like this. Premise one, there is a God. He is perfectly loving. So the, the atheist or skeptic who's making this argument is agreeing with the Christian or the theist about God being perfectly loving. We're not going to be considering trickster gods. We're not going to be considering the sort of evil God or anything like that. We're going to take God as all loving, all good. Premise two, if a perfectly loving God exists, then non-resistant non-belief does not occur. And the way you defend this premise is basically saying, look, God is perfectly good and perfectly loving makes sense that he would want to have a relationship with all of his creatures if it's perfectly loving. Because if he only loved, you know, 20% of his creatures, that wouldn't be a maximally loving being. He wants to have a relationship between all, you know, human beings made in God's image. So this would make sense, right? Um, Non-resistant non-belief is the idea of people who don't believe in God, but they don't have any blocks. Because the theist could say, well, the people that don't believe in God simply have sin or they want to serve their own ends or they're just evil or something like that. So what what this premise is trying to say is, look, we're looking at people, non-resistant non-believers. These are people that would believe in God, that would want to have a relationship with God. They're just not convinced that God exists. And if God provided them with more existence for their existence, they would believe in God. Premise three, non-resistant non-belief does occur. So there are people that exist that if God provided them with at least a little bit more evidence, they would come to believe in God. And the way the skeptic or atheist is going to defend this premise is they're going to say, hey, look, suppose God exists and wants to have a loving relationship with people. Can we imagine there's at least one person who is open to the idea of having a loving relationship with God, but in order to have a loving relationship with God, they would first need to at least believe God existed. It's like, if I got a note from a girl and she wrote a note or somebody, somebody gave me, it was like, Hey, this girl really likes you. And I didn't even know who this person was. I didn't even know they existed. I'd be like, who is this person? I don't, I don't even believe they exist, or I believe you're lying to me or something like this. Um, I would need to at least know that they existed as a precursor to being able to have a loving relationship with them. Um, so that's the point that that the skeptic or atheist is going to make. And then they conclude, therefore, God does not exist because God's existence is incompatible with the existence of non-resistant non-belief. Now, there are two ways you can make this case. There's an evidential version and a logical version similar to the problem of evil. The logical version is saying it's impossible for a perfectly loving God to exist, giving seemingly overwhelming non-resistant non-belief. So the challenge here, because what, what this is acknowledging, is acknowledging that where the theist is probably going to push back is premise three. It's saying, look, there really are no such thing as non-resistant non-believers. So what they're saying is, what you see is what you get. The fact that there are people that seem to be non-resistant, non-belief, and perhaps, you know, if I'm a skeptic, perhaps I'm one of them, um, it seems it, it seems impossible that God exists and is really perfectly loving, given the fact that I don't, it seems to me that I don't have any problems, or we can at least find somebody who doesn't have any of these blocks, these like sinful blocks to believing in the existence of God. Um, so that's one way to put it. But the difficulty is justifying whether or not there really are non-resistant non-believers per se, and there may be some Christian denominations like Presbyterians who may actually not even accept the logical version of this, which is why there's also an evidential version of this, which would basically say, hey, look, okay, we get the point that it may not be the case that that we can completely show that every, that one example of non-resistant non-belief is actually non-resistant non-belief, but does it seem probable that a perfectly loving God exists given how much apparent non-resistant non-belief actually occurs. And this would be basically, rather than saying, look, therefore God does not exist, period, it would basically seem, therefore the, the, basically the existence of God seems improbable given the number of people who seem open or willing to have a relationship with God and God doesn't seem to be moving a muscle, you know, <laughs> metaphysical muscle, um, to come down and, and meet them in their unbelief, so to speak. So that's the version of the argument. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks, thanks for watching, but uh, hopefully that's something to chew on.